I'm Sam Bell. I'm from Tupelo, Mississippi here, and uh, my old friend of Elvis. It was, I met him when the, uh, I, live in, I live in the place called The Hill, Tupelo Hill, and they moved into our neighborhood. And they were one of, they were one of like three or four white families in the neighborhood. And he moved into the neighborhood, and uh, that's how we met. We, uh, we already had our little neighborhood boys, you know, but when he moved into the neighborhood, he stood out there in the backyard, watched us play for a while, well, when he moved, when he moved us back up, when he moved in, their property adjoined ours. We had a, we had a lot of pasture and fig trees and watermelon patches and plum and a peanut trees and a peanut bed and like that. So our, our his backyard ran to our backyard, and uh, he used to stand out there. The first couple of days, he stood out there and watched us play. Me and the neighborhood guys. And then we saw him standing out there, we, we went on and invited him to join us. And uh, of course his mother was kind of reluctant at first, and uh, she was very protective of him. So she watched her for a while. It was just a little fence between the property to keep the animals in and out. And he was standing there at that fence, and he watched it for a while, and we, we decided we'd go up and ask his mother, Gladys, could he come out and play with us? And, she was kind of reluctant at first. She uh, watched us play, and, and we was all clean, nothing bad. So she finally let, it, let him come over the fence with us. Of course, the fence was just too strong wide. He just pulled us in step through. And so he was, he was over in there. So we, right there at that fence, we had the watermelon patch and the peanut patch, and we had uh, apple tree, pear trees, and fig trees, and we had a, a sand ball that we played in the sand. We had little mounds where we'd get behind shoot BB guns and all that. And we had a place where we'd ride our bikes. And we had a swimming hole that we'd go swimming behind the, behind the uh, scenery because we had skinny dipping, you know. So, uh, and then up, upstream further, we had a little fishing hole. We would uh, go out and catch, we were catching fish, not on a hook. We were catching fish with little pins, made a, make a hook out of it, catch them little old fish. And on our property, we had, we had chickens also, so we did our, had our own eggs. We would catch the fish and fry the whole fish hole with the eggs, and we never had to go in the house or anything. <laughs> so we'd go swimming, and it'd get muddy. We'd get out of it and go dry off and go back to eating fruit and stuff. And we had a, we had a couple of mules that, that my papa had bought those mules. They used to pull logs with them, big, them big males and like. And they was they had kind of worn them down, so they was going away to the slaughterhouse. My my, my grandpa bought those, so we could have something down there to play with it. And they were very, very those mules. You know, they got to be got to be attached to us. They was big ones. So sometimes we'd ride, and sometimes they just hang around us all the time. They were good for petting. It was good therapy. Yeah, we were petting them. And uh, we. Uh, because we had a little, we call it a little old gang, like, you know, it wasn't a gang gang, it was a bunch of boys, you know, we had that fat Albert type gang. So we'd, uh, we had a, one of the friends lived right down the street from him. His, uh, they had a piano, they had, only one had a piano in that house. And we used to go down that house. On our way down, we go, we started down there at that house. He played, being there beating on the piano, but he didn't know how to play it, but he was making noise. and. Uh, the boy's James, his name, the boy's sister, she was taking music. So she was trying to teach him everything in there, but he, he couldn't play the piano, you know. Then we'd, uh, we'd gone down, it was, it was a store, right down half block, store down there that you get to get a penny, you can get, get a handful of candy for a penny. And we'd stop in there and get, those, get that penny candy. And then we'd gone down to the Lake Theater. And, uh, there we had our fun at that theater. It's still there on Broadway. And you only had a white section and a black section. And uh, my brother was, uh, he was, when he was in high school, he, he did, that's the work he had after school. He cleaned that theater. So the man that uh, owned the theater, they got to be real close. But um, we thought we were sneaking in. He'd go on the white side and I'd go on the black side. 
and uh, we, the blacks were going to sit upstairs. And um, they had a petition up there. The whites sat over there too, but the blacks had a section too, but they just had a petition. You could step over it. And uh, I sneak in, we sneak in on the black side. He, he thought he was sneaking in on the white side. We thought, we all thought we were sneaking in, but he knew what we were doing. And then as soon as we get up there, he'd come on over and climb on over. And we sit in the aisle and watch all the movies and westerns and all that. And he, you know, he'd look out through there with a projector coming out. He'd see us sitting down there. But we thought we was getting away with something. Because we, we'd buy some 10 cent popcorn and we thought, thought we had a fair. I thought when nobody looking, we'd duck on in. So one day he told us, he said, uh, Y'all, you know what, y'all thought y'all were really getting away with something. He said, but I knew what you were doing. He said, as long as you didn't occupy a seat, it was all right. <laughs> so <laughs> he let us stay there. We sit in the aisle and watch all those movies. Then we go down to, to the fairgrounds where he performed that time. But they had, they had, a, they had a one side stadium there that we uh, and we played baseball out there. And they suspected it was sitting in the stadium. There was a stadium for the fair, really when they have entertainment, the bull rides and all the horse riding and all that. So uh, he used to go up there and sit up in that stand. And we used to have to make him come down when he's turning back. Somewhere he'd sit up there and stare across there. But we thought he was kind of nuts. <laughs> we, you know, we all were fools, you know, we all were nuts boys. So. And uh, he, I, noticed, I noticed when I came back, he end, I was gone when he came here, but he ended up playing there at that place. And it was kind of ironic that he was. Sit there. He just sit there and stare across there. I guess he pictures himself doing it, I guess. And then, then we, we come out of there, and then there was a cockerel banana. It's still there. It's still here, but it's in a different location. We used to get a dime, and we'd get, back. we'd get two or three bags. Of he let us have bananas. And that was our eats on the way back. So he had a bag, and we was eating bananas, and peeled bananas. And we'd come all the way over what they call shake rag or cross track. That's where the at the barber shops and cafes. And the guys sit out there with the guitars and play the music stuff. And he got really intrigued with that. We, he liked the blues and stuff. We didn't, you know, we was, we, we was living up on the hill. We was sort of, thought we were sort of sophisticated, you know. We didn't listen to a lot. Of, we hear the blues, but we didn't tune into a lot of blues, you know. We listened to the moon glows and something like that, the platters or something, you know. But uh, he would like that blues, man. And uh, they'd teach him. They showed them what they could. They wasn't. They didn't treat him bad. They took him under the wing, treated him bad, and he did up. And uh, he really enjoyed that long end. Then we had to we had to get back home for dark. So back up the hills, back up on the hill we go. So uh, his his uh, he had a he had a manner about him. Yes, ma'am, no ma'am, which we did too. Well, being white back there at that time, and my grandparents, you know. From way back, my granddaddy, you know, white people just didn't say yes, ma'am, no, sir. But uh, he he would. We had to. But he'd come in. He didn't have to if he didn't want to. He'd come in, yes, ma'am, and she just loved him to death, my grandma. And I was her pick. So he was her other pick. <laughs> so he could, he, that kind of got to him that he was that manable. He could come in that house, he didn't have to knock. He'd just come in and go in and lay down and get him something out of the refrigerator, whatever he wanted. He had a run of the meal at that house, and they just loved it. And uh, I heard it so bad when he had to leave. He told us one day that if, when he get ready to go, he said, I gotta move. And we sort of hated it. You know, he was, he, was, he was a different kind of guy. He was kind of a, he wasn't boastful, but he was kind of guy like, I gotta do better. And if you got a 22, I need a 38 or something like that. You got, and because we had BB guns, we had single shot BB gun. He had to have a pump. So it was always a little bit. We afraid other people wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't understand him like we did. Cause we were just we just brush him off, ah, baloney and stuff like that. And you you would tell him, ah, oh, baloney. He talk all the time. Ah, oh, baloney. He he loved baloney and cheese. He said, oh, bologna might be good, but cheese the best. <laughs> so we, at this house there, we had a, we had a little tree house. And uh, it wasn't a covered tree house, it was just a platform type. It would have kept all our stuff up there. And he had a broom that he, he played with the broom with his mouth, you know. That's the way he kept his broom. And his mother would fix us some Kool-Aid and some, and some cheese sandwiches and, and banana sandwiches and stuff. 
and put them up in that on that tree. And so we could almost jump up there and get it. We just make a couple steps and we got it. And so we get up in there and sit there and we drink the, drink that Kool Aid. She could make some of the best Kool Aid out of it. And she was she was really protective of him. She kept an eye on him a lot, but she felt real comfortable around us. We didn't do anything bad, you know, just a little knot hole game we call us that. <laughs> well, we was all out, um, kind of just out together there in the pasture there. And uh, he, she sprung it on and said, I'm going to have to move this week. I'll be moving. And we thought another one of his fantasies, ah, yeah, right. Uh, he said, yeah, I got to go. We got to move. He didn't tell me where he was going to. But then he did, we did, we watched them move. They did move within that week. We was kind of afraid that he was, like I said, he was kind of a different guy. We was kind of afraid that people wouldn't understand him like we did. And even the, even the relative, adult people around when he left, it was kind of sad because they learned to like that little boy, loved that little boy, let's put that, but they didn't know what they was loving. They just, they just know he was nice. He was one of the fellas, he was one of us, you know, he act like, so he was, he was, when he was in that neighborhood, it wasn't no black and white. He was, you were protected. If you were a child, you belonged to that whole neighborhood. I don't care how many of you, what you look like, you belonged to that neighborhood, and nobody gonna bother you while you're in that neighborhood. But we was afraid that people wouldn't understand him because he, he wasn't really boastful, but he was kind of, you know, maybe I should say boastful. And uh, that's, one, that's, that's, the most, that's the most biggest question they was asking about, and wonder how they gonna treat him, you know, but we didn't know where he was going. And we didn't, we didn't, we didn't get to see him anymore. I, uh, one time, I was out in California and I tried to see him, and uh, he, had, he was performing out there between, between acts. He had one in the morning, kind of late, that they, need. they say he had one in the morning, but he, he getting ready for the, for the afternoon thing, and I was in between. But they wouldn't let me see him. That last, my last contact with him. Until we, I was in Chicago, and we kept hearing this music coming out. Young guy was singing song, singing them song, no be crew and all that stuff. And uh, I was called one day. The guy called me one day and asked me, was that our boy? And we uh, checked in down here, it was him. And they were really happy. We went down everywhere, off Chicago, everywhere then. Oh boy, Evans, that's my buddy Evans. <laughs> E.P. we call him. <laughs> we couldn't believe it though, we just couldn't believe it though. Man, no, he could. That can't be him, some of the guys said. That can't be. <laughs> yeah. You know, he, with sometimes he'd like to wear them overall with that, take that strap and throw it back over his shoulder, and, you know, and he just looked at him and said, no, not him, not him. He couldn't do that. I would have hugged him, we would have hugged him forever. Cause that was my buddy. Yeah, and he, if he, if they had told him I was out there, he'd come, he'd jumped out the window out there. Yeah, man, the show, boy, look at me where I am now, man. Yeah, yeah. I guess we would've hugged forever, I guess. <laughs> yeah, one, that was one of my buddies, one of them good ones. The little time I knew him, wish I had, had a chance to know him. I mean, I knew him longer, but I, not with him. Yeah, I'd like to spend more time with him. Cause we could talk about some old things, old time things. We did a little old bad things. <laughs>